Welcome to the Fin Hub Show, the one NFL podcast you can't leave off your roster. Now, here's your hosts, Joe and Kevin DeHale. All right, all right, all right. Good morning, Miami. Welcome to Season 1, Episode 5 of the Fin Hub Show. It is Friday. We finally made it through the week. Thank you guys for being a part of it. Yeah, 5 already. That's cool. That's yeah. awesome. Hey, I, I got a chance to look into the, the Heat's traffic, man. That guy looks... He looks cool. Yeah. Khalil, Khalil Ware. Looks solid. Yeah. Seven foot one, big guy. Hopefully the Heat can play with some size now. Yeah. He's athletic. Yeah. He can shoot. They compared him to Brooke Lopez. I think that's awesome. I'll take it. Something that we've needed for a long time. So maybe we can move Bam to the four. Yeah. Also, Bronny James. Yeah. Drafted by the Lakers. Now you got... Ah, but we all saw that coming. Father and son on the Lakers. That's, that's pretty crazy. It's interesting. You know, LeBron's not going anywhere now, so we know he's going to end his career in LA. It's weird. I kind of thought it was going to... Or I figured it would happen, but I was like, is it really going to happen? You know, it, everyone saw it, bro. They, they Everyone saw it coming. I, I didn't think... And even leading into that pick, they were even saying, oh, don't pick him if you're not the Lakers or the Suns because then he's going to go to to Australia to play or some something so like that. So but whatever. We're not here to talk basketball, no, right? No, we're not. So um the the Heat <laughs> the Heat. Wow, sorry. The Dolphins. Yeah. They they've made some key moves, right? This offseason, awesome stuff. But I kind of wanted to see if we can get into like the guys that were most excited. These can be players that are rostered that were rostered before, not even incoming free agents or incoming, you know, rookies. rookies. Just who who are we most excited to see this year coming into the season? Okay. So let, let's start off with you on defense, right? And then I'll let you do defense. I'll do defense. Then I'll do offense. And then you do offense to finish, all right? Okay. So, so who are you most excited to see on defense? So the guy that I'm looking most forward to seeing play is Jalen Ramsey. Oh, yeah. That's a good one, man. Unfortunately, he didn't start the season with us last season because of an injury. But you saw as soon as... He played for us the impact that he had. I believe it was week eight against the Patriots. Yeah, yeah, that was a crazy game. I was actually in Mexico, man. And I oh, was yeah. <laughs> watching it on my phone, like super excited to see his debut, but 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 continue. Sorry. Yeah, week eight uh, against the Patriots. He caught one, almost took it to the house. I thought he had that. I think yeah, he actually man. predicted that too. Really? Yeah. A he, pick six? I think he said before that game, we gotta we gotta look back, mm -hmm. but I believe he predicted before that game that he was gonna catch it and take one to the house he almost took it to the house yeah i think he if i remember correctly it was cater kohu that was in his way he had to jump over yeah. him or something right something weird like that's that. that's too bad well whatever either way you saw the impact that he had immediate impact, immediate right? impact and it's something we weren't used to seeing with xavian howard being so inconsistent not really being on the field either as soon as he steps on the field to have that pick you know like man if you can see him the whole year uh, healthy man it's 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 gonna yeah. be really and you want to talk about aura like mm -hmm. this guy is oh, oozing yeah. it yeah oozing yeah. it dog right yeah and he can just he can do anything on that field which... well actually speaking of last season i i can't wait to see him play this season because last season he was stuck to the right side the entire time something that he's not comfortable doing throughout his career he's been moved all over the place and shadowed receivers this season or last season, he didn't get to do that with Fangio. Yeah, that's you know, and it's a shame, right? Because you got a guy that's so skilled that can really be moved all over the field, and you're gonna limit him to one thing, one side of the field, right? Right. Like, so Fangio's defense was predicated on not giving too much information mm -hmm. to the quarterbacks pre-snap, but that would leave Ramsey off of the best receiver at times. And yeah. that's not what you want. You want him to be shadowing that guy bare minimum. Of course, man. He was begging for it last year. I remember he, he, I think they had asked him before the game uh, against the Bills, one of the games, right? And they're like, Do you, are you going to shadow Stefan? And he, he kind of gave like a half-ass answer. It was like, I don't know. We'll see. Like, it's not up to me. But like, you can tell he was dying to do that, right? And and Fangio just didn't allow it to happen. 
So it, it's unfortunate, man. I'm I'm happy that Fangio's out of here because you got a guy that, you know, basically an older coach, stubborn guy. Stuck on his ways. Stuck on his ways, exactly. What I love about these younger coaches, man, if it's going to help me be a better coach and I have to adjust, so be it. That's what I'm going to do. And you see Mike McDaniel doing that. I think Anthony Weaver, he already got his, his uh, opportunity in the Texans being a defensive coordinator. So he knows exactly what he's done wrong and what he needs to do better. So you, you, I, I think he's definitely a player's coach that's going to be able to, you know, receive some criticism from his players as well. Like, hey, man, I think you should be doing this with me. And I think it's going to trickle down to exactly what you're saying, Jalen Ramsey. He's going to be able to to get his ear, you know what I'm saying? And be yeah. like, hey, look, you know, do this with me. This is what's going to help. A lot of players were super happy to see Vic Fangio gone. Yeah. Javon Holland even posted that video, yeah, the kick, kick rocks. rocks. Yeah. Cam Smith. Funny. Cam Smith didn't like him at all. At Cam all. Smith didn't even get to play because of him. Yeah. and We and were rolling with Eli Apple over him. I don't understand. He was getting roasted the entire yeah, season. Yeah, it was terrible, man. And you, you, you heard the reports that it was basically he didn't like Cam Smith as a person. Yeah, right? I don't think it had anything to do with his level of play. Stupid. So, stupid man, unfortunate. That's that's not a guy I would want to be on the coaching staff. Kind of more so like a guy like uh, Brian Flores, right? Yeah. Ugh, nah, it doesn't, doesn't rub, rub people the right way. And, you know, that's, that's one thing that people say players in this day and age are really soft. But, man, if I don't like a guy, I don't want to play for him, bro. Like, well, I don't want to give also, him my best, you know. These are also grown-ass men. Like, yeah. nobody likes to be yelled at by yeah, another man. Like, they're not going to take your shit, take bro, that. at the end these of guys the day. Are, these guys are making millions and millions of dollars, and you have some old man screaming at you like, yeah. oh, fuck you, man. What the hell? <laughs> it's like, I don't have to hear your shit, bro. Yeah. You know what? I'll get lost. How about that? I'll go play for another team that's going to pay me as well. So, yeah. whatever. But so, I'm really happy to see... That we've picked, we've we have Anthony Weaver now as a defensive coordinator. Yeah. He talked a lot about using Jalen Ramsey more as a chess piece that he can move all over the field. Is there a clip of that? Well, yeah, I, I think that was actually one of his first clips. Let's see if yeah. we have it here. I mean, it's Jalen Ramsey. I mean, come on now, like he, you talk about prototype corners, um, he is that right? Size, length, speed, competitiveness. The thing about him is I think he is he's your ultimate chess piece. So to have him just sit outside and, you know, be a field corner or boundary corner or something like that, I think is a detriment to him. We got to find ways to move him around where he can be most impactful. And um, we're committed to doing that. So, yeah, you see that Anthony Weaver wants to move things around with the defense already and change the way that we go about business on defense. So Yeah, and it's cool, man. He's saying like that moving chess piece, right? Yeah. A guy that you, you throw him all over the field. Maybe he can even play some safety. You know, I've I've heard people talk about that. That would be sick, right? Yeah. Maybe maybe eventually, you know, if this thing with Javon Hahn doesn't get done, maybe we keep him around, throw him at safety later on in his career, right? Well, he did play safety at FSU. So oh. Okay, yeah. I, I didn't know that. Yeah, he played he played okay. some safety at FSU. Interesting. So. Well, that's cool, man. I, I I think I think that provides you know makes him a lot more versatile than I than I thought he was. So if he can go back to playing safety, maybe later on in his career, because right now he's best at corner. You know, you want him out there at corner. He's, I think I believe he's the best corner in the NFL. A lot of people are saying it's Sauce Gardner. I think he's uh, extremely the overrated. The Sauce guy, Gardner, the, the the hold machine. Yeah, bro, that guy is just constantly holding people. I I don't think he's that good. I he's overrated. Yeah, and and Waddle gets in there, he instantly cooks him, bro. Come like on. so, like what are we talking about here? This guy's the best. He can't even handle our second receiver, right? <laughs> but even though I think Waddle's a, a number one, but definitely I I think your pick is fantastic. I. I didn't think of that for, for whatever reason, but yeah, Jalen Ramsey's sick. So. Well, before we move on to your pick, mm -hmm. let's uh, hear what Jalen Ramsey had to say about coming to Miami and taking on Anthony Weaver's defense. Oh, it's been cool. It's been it's been fun so far. Um, a lot of communication between us two. Um, I think he'll you know let me show my full skill set. You know, once again this year, so it should be fun. Sorry, was that about Anthony Weaver? What, yeah. what have you noticed as far as the uh, differences between him and, uh, and Fake last year? Uh, I'm not going to compare him. That ain't, I'm not going to sit here and do that. Y'all can do that on y'all's own. Um, but I think he's a, a great coach. I think he's a good hire. Uh, I think he'll put guys in position to do uh, really good things and 
um, show their whole skill sets, and that's that's fun. That makes the game fun. You know, now you've had an entire offseason to, to get over that, that injury you had. Um, how much better now do you feel maybe like November, December of last year? Um, I mean, if I, if I didn't feel good, I wouldn't have played last year. So you, you, you were the whole way back last year? I mean, I played and I was a pro bowler. So I think I did pretty well. How much do you just enjoy the full slate of lining up different places and being involved in just several facets of it? So he didn't really say it, but you could see he's not a huge fan of Vic Fangio's, obviously. <laughs> and why would he be? Obviously excited. He doesn't really show it there too much on camera, but with those penguin looking, uh, I'm I'm sure he's excited that. To, to be doing something different on defense, not being stuck to one side of the field the entire time and yeah. being able to move around. Great pick, man. Great pick. I I, I think he's going to really shine this year, and he's going to prove that we need to keep him around for a longer, like a, a way longer time, right? A long yeah. time, sorry. <laughs> so, yeah, that's cool. <laughs> so who do you have? Who, who's your, who are you excited to see on defense this season? Yeah, so so mine's pretty simple. I mean, it's kind of easier because I'm, I'm picking a new face in Jordan Poyer. I think it's always awesome when you get a guy from, you know, an AFC East rival. I've yeah. said it before. I what he's going to bring is a lot of knowledge from that team as well. A team that we've struggled to beat, man. A team that's always kicking our ass, Josh Allen. You know, he's been in practice with them. He's seen other teams up against him. He sees what works. I I, I feel like he can give us that formula to to mm -hmm. finally the secret formula. Yeah, that little sauce, right? Yeah. That secret stuff. Mhm. Mm to finally, you know, Get over the hump, our little hump, which is beat the Bills, right? You need to beat the Bills to win the AFC East. We see it year in year, like year in and year out. We beat the Jets, we beat the Patriots, but we, we can't. own the Jets, we own the Patriots. Yeah, but we can't beat the Bills. But the Bills own the Dolphins. Yeah. So if, if if he can just bring that alone, that's extremely valuable to me. That's why I'm so excited to see him. Not to mention he's he's still a great player. He is older. He's played for a while in this league, but as soon as he stepped onto the on, onto the Bills team, man, he was just a difference maker, badass player. Yeah, older, but still, you know, you see the production last year, still great. You know, had 101 tackles, four passes defended, played 16 games, so still kind of durable. I, I know he's had some injury concerns over the past few years, but... You know, there's a reason why the the Bills brought him back last year, even when he was flirting with us, trying to get back on our, uh, trying to get on our team. You know, yeah, I thought we had him. I, I thought really we did. had him in the bag. Mm -hmm. We ended up getting something better, which was Jalen Ramsey, the guy that you're talking about. Yeah. So it kind of like we didn't really care after that. I thought that that Jalen Ramsey tweet was. I remember you had told me you're like, bro, we just got Jalen Ramsey, and I'm like, yeah, no, it was. <laughs> I was like, dude, you thought it was one up, of those bro. fake Schefter accounts, right? Yeah. That's like, yeah, okay, all right. But bro, as as soon as I saw that, you know, it's something that we even had a couple videos out when we were you were mostly doing the edits. Yeah, yeah. That you know we were kind of saying that that's a really good option to get Jalen Ramsey. So when we got him, it was super surprising. But you know, this whole thing with with Jordan Poyer, uh, definitely, you know, someone that was flirting with us, cool to get him in here, and. The the Bills definitely still saw something in him. They they signed him for a two year, twelve and a half million dollar contract. Yeah. I think the only reason why he was cut was for the cap savings. I mean, they're kind of in cap hell over there. They're they're trying to figure that out. That's why they they you know cut all these guys essentially, got rid of some guys. Did their window close? I believe so. You know, it's coming from a Dolphins fan, so not only that, it's a little but biased, but you got all these quarterbacks being paid. Josh Allen, I I think his number's like forty five yeah. million a year annually. It's so gonna, he's, yeah, he's gonna be knocking on their door saying, "Hey, uh, it's my turn." Yeah, you know, I mean, dude, it's it's I'm a significant that. increase that he would get, right? Yeah, dude, with the guys getting fifty five million, Tua's knocking on that door. You know, he's if it doesn't get done this year, he's gonna get sixty, right? So mm. that's another conversation in itself. Yeah, but I would have to say, you know, he's an upgrade over. Over uh, Brandon Jones yeah. Uh, alone, yeah. Brandon Jones, you know, he doubles his tackles, you know, same amount of forced fumbles, same amount of passes defended. Brandon Jones did have the two interceptions over him. But he's not really that guy. But he's not that guy, exactly. He's not a ball hawk. Yeah, you're not I, that I would guy, say, pal. actually, Jordan Poor is a little bit more of a ball hawk, even though he's not one either. 
But, you know, he is a playmaker. He is someone that knows exactly where to be on the field, would help maybe Javon Holland roam around a little bit more, right? Mm -hmm. So I think it's, you know, someone on the back end that can be like, hey, I got this. I can hold this down. You know, go do your thing. Kind of freelance out there, Javon. Yeah. And, and yeah, I think he's just going to provide, you know, some some help, you know, from a veteran standpoint, too. It, it's kind of cool. If we roll this clip, you can see that he's talking about, the you know, getting to know the players and, and how good it is for them. So I see if these can be voluntary, you just want to endear yourself to the team that we're out here. <laughs> yeah, you know, I think a lot of uh, the success comes from just the communication part, especially on the back end. Um, you know, if you want to be successful, you got to know who you're playing with, essentially. You got to know the guys, you know, on and off the field, you know, in the fourth quarter. You know, I want to know the guy that I'm playing with. I want to know about his family. Um, you know, that way you learn to trust each other that way. Um, so that's essentially why I'm here. You know, I don't necessarily have to be, but I want to be. Uh, I'm excited about this opportunity. Um, and, and it's been a good, it's been a good, uh, good OTA so far. What has been your impression of Anthony Weaver's defense? I absolutely love it. Um, you know, obviously, you know, playing in the league for 12 years, I feel like I've seen most of the defenses or I've played in a lot of defenses, obviously some nuances with terminology and details and whatnot, but um, it's a really exciting defense and got some really good players, obviously, um, up front and the linebacking corner and then on the back end. Again, I just want to come here and, and do what I can to help this team um, become better and help them win games. So yeah, I I think it's cool, man. It's it's basically it's gonna help us, you know, gel more on, on defense and kind of they're gonna have each other's backs. It's like I know the person, like he said, mm -hmm. and it, it's gonna help them. They're gonna it's gonna help them learn their tendencies as well. You know, it's kind of like, you know, yin and yang back there. You know, so I I think it's awesome. My favorite pickup uh, on the defense as of right now, even though I love Jordan Brooks as well. So, uh, yeah, man, if he can just help us get over losing to Josh Allen, that's more than enough oh, for me. Oh, that's so. huge. <laughs> it's that's huge, huge. If we could figure out how to beat the Bills every season we the win same the AFC way East. We, we're doing this to the Patriots and the Jets, we are solid. Yeah, we solid, we solid. win the AFC East, right? If we can beat the Bills, I, I think that's all it takes. We can stay out of the North in the playoffs. Yeah, so get man. out of that cold weather. Man, we gotta we gotta go for that AFC the the, the number one seed. That's overall. key, man. That's all. And bro, That's imagine key. playing the the whole playoffs in Miami. We don't have to deal with that cold stuff. I know people. That's that's the narrative right now. We can't beat beat teams in the cold. I mean, we've seen it. We've seen the Dolphins play well in the cold yeah, against the Bills, right? Yeah, just more than likely they're not playing well in the cold. Yeah. So. <laughs> We can do it, but I, if we could stay away from it, why not, bro? Yeah. Just fucking yeah, go for stay in Miami, one. bro. Yeah. So that'd be cool. So you and have, then, so we've said Jalen Ramsey and Jordan Poyer on defense. Yeah. Most exciting players to watch out for next season I'll just, on defense. But who do you have on offense that you're most excited to see this upcoming season? Yeah, on on, on offense, I, I have to say Devon H. Han, man. I know we've talked about him a lot in the coming um, the last few days, you know, on the podcast. But man, I would love to see him take over that lead back role, you know. Mm -hmm. And it, it's crazy because last year he he was like number three or four in the running back room. But as soon as Savon Ahmed went down, obviously Jeff Wilson was hurt as well. It, it kind of led into a bigger role, and then he just erupted his first game. It was against the Denver Broncos. I mean, yeah, you instantly saw yeah, the talent we, there. We all remember that game, but you instantly he he showed out instantly. It was crazy. He was just <laughs> breaking away every play. He got four touchdowns that game. You know, a couple of them were receiving touchdowns as well off of that little that little flick that Tua was doing, which was awesome. It looked like he looked like a little magician doing. Yeah, that. he looks like a like a video game out there. Yeah, but man, if if I could see him take that lead back, I do know we want him to play a little bit of receiver too, because you know McDaniel. Was, was saying something about him having a bigger role in the offense, maybe running some routes as well. But if he can take that lead back, he showed last year that he can definitely be one of the better backs in the league. And, uh, you know, he showed it basically through his yards per carry. It was 7.8 yards per carry. That's, That's nuts. Dude, it's nuts, man. Nuts. He, he actually led the league in that as well. Um, and, you know, basically almost 1,000 all-purpose all purpose yards last year. Mm -hmm. So... That that with only playing eleven games, you see the level of talent this kid has. You can see that he can just provide so much to this offense. So he just needs to be out there. And another game that stuck out to me last year was the game against the Giants. Man, mm -hmm. he had he had one hundred and fifty one yards, 
uh, on eight carries, bro. Insane. Insane, bro. Insane. Like, so this kid just oozes talent. And if we can keep him out there, if he can stay healthy, you know, everyone lock him in on your fantasy <laughs> that fantasy team, man. You got to draft this kid. Oh, that's for sure. I wonder what number he is, he is in fantasy right now. I have no idea. I mean, that's something we're going to get back into this year, right? Yeah. It's something we want to do. Maybe we can have some of you guys join our, our fantasy league. That'd, oh, that'd be, be kind of cool, right? Yeah. Uh, they, there will be a buy-in. We, we, we've learned over the years that that's the best way. That's the best way to incentivize, you know, people actually sticking around with their team, even at the end of the season. Yeah. If you don't have a buy-in, then people just don't take it serious. Yeah. They just stop or maybe people start doing stupid trades in your league. So yeah, definitely something you want to get into, but, but yeah, man, I think if he can be that lead back, even though we've said that you know, it's probably going to be a running back by committee, mm-hmm. you know, group because you want to keep them fresh for the end of the year. Right. That's the guy I really want to see. I want to see him out there. I want to see him get the ball more because he was just a lot like Tyree Kill, a home run waiting to happen every time he got the ball in his hands. Every so, time. Yeah, man. I, I don't know. Do you have anything to say about him or anything interesting? There's not much to say about Devon H. N. that hasn't been said already. Yeah. To me, he's he's electric. He doesn't even look like he's moving sometimes. He's just yeah. like floating to the end zone. It's he's, a video game, man. He's amazing. He's amazing to watch. Yeah, someone someone that McDaniel wanted in here, and you saw that the year he was drafted. Oh, he was so excited to draft Yeah, him. super excited. I actually heard that the Dolphins, uh, not the Dolphins, McDaniel wanted to draft him in the second round that year. Mm-hmm. We got him in the third, so he was even willing to take him at the, at the second round. So definitely someone that he believes in. Definitely someone that you can see that he's gonna, he's going to open up his game. He's going to want to. Well, get- yeah. So something interesting to be said about Devon A. Chain that we've A. Chan that we've talked about in the podcast already a, a couple times. Mm-hmm. But this idea of moving him to wide receiver or at least lining him up at wide receiver for some time. Yeah. In the game, I I think it's it's going to be interesting to see how he does that. Is it going to be more or less like that McCaffrey kind of deal that they have in San Francisco? Yeah. Because he's like this offensive weapon. So. Are you, are you asking me? Yeah. I guess. I mean, he might he might turn into that, you know, but if he turns into that, then we got to pay him a lot. But that's not a bad thing, right? No, then you're getting thing. a crazy. You these, these home run hitters. <laughs> yeah. You're getting a, a bunch of production out of him. I mean, maybe maybe he turns into that, but I don't want to say all that. You know, I'm I'm expecting big things from him, but to say all that, then you're like. It's not something that you can see happening, right? Mm-hmm. But you did see that, that he was very productive when he was on the field. So definitely my guy. I'm I'm very curious to see who you have on offense now. So I can't wait to see Odell Beckham Jr. play for the Dolphins. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we know I'm super excited about that. Yeah, he's, he came at a bargain for Miami, but he's still got a lot of juice left in the tank. Yeah. So Odell is a guy that has a huge catch radius. So you just throw it up there and he'll go grab it. Yeah. He's a guy that's a terrific route runner with sticky hands. And he's got quick feet. He could still outmaneuver a lot of corners on a one-step slant. So he's got a lot going for him still in this stage in his career. And we saw some of that in the uh, with the Ravens last year. Yeah, and I think he helps us in the red zone, right? Right. You know, someone that can uh, can catch those fades. Instead of throwing it to Tyree Kill, maybe you can get it to this guy that has has the type of hands that he has, can, can get those jump balls as well. Obviously, he's not huge, but he can still get up there with people, right? So, Yeah, so really looking at it, he, he's going he's gonna to see a lot of single coverage, obviously, this season. Yeah. He, he, has alongside, to, he has to be able to eat, right? Yeah, playing that. alongside Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle, like there's no yeah. attention on this guy. So he's going to see a lot of single coverage, a lot of mismatch, mismatches, and he's going to be able to feast. So I'm really excited to see that happen. Last season, our receiver three was Braxton Barrios, who I believe it was t- he ended up with 27 receptions, 238 yards, and a touchdown. Mm-hmm. And if we compare the two, yeah, Odell Beckham had. A, a better year by far. Yeah, without even it, it almost seems like he wasn't even trying. <laughs> yeah, it, there he's in a different league, and even yeah. in this stage of his career, no slight to Burials, but Odell Beckham is he's you know he's a monster in his own right. So even at this stage in his career, 
Yeah, and you wanna you wanna be able to acquire this talent, right? All over the field at every position, even if you stack at that position, right? Because we're stacking at this point at wide receiver. Um, I I think it's it's awesome to have him. I, I the only downfall is that he's he's only played thirty five of a possible sixty seven games since twenty twenty. That's that's the that's the part that scares you. Um, I think it helps on the back end having guys like Ezukama on the roster and Malik Washington now. So if he goes down, you know, he has someone that can, you know, well, hopefully step in. I'll tell you this. If Odell Beckham Jr. can stay healthy this season, I don't see it as a stretch for him to get close to, if not even pass, a thousand yards in receiving this season. Yeah. And that would actually make Miami the sixth team in NFL history to have three receivers go for over 1,000 yards. Wow. And that hasn't been done since 2008 with the Cardinals, led by Larry Fitzgerald. Who, who was on that team? Fitzgerald, Bolden? Anquan and Bolden, and I forgot the last dude, but... Maybe, let's put up a graphic here. Yeah. Yeah, there you see it. So, it can happen. Yeah. It can happen. You can have three guys with a th three receivers with over a thousand yards. I had to look that up because I'm like, has that ever happened? Yeah. But yeah, apparently it's happened five times before. I don't see a reason why the Dolphins can't be the six. I mean, and in his own right, he did do some crazy stuff last year, right? And he, it's not like he had crazy numbers, but you know, he still averaged a career high in, in yards per reception at sixteen point one. For him to, to do that last year, you would like to think that maybe he can get that. Maybe he can get it even higher this year with us. He's going to get a lot more opportunities with the well, well. Yeah, he's going to get a lot more opportunities with the ball in his hands, right? And and he might even have an open field to run with because mm -hmm. there's going to be so much attention on Waddle and 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 Tyree Kill. So yeah, and what I'm curious to see too is, you know that Tyree Kill needs like the most attention yeah Jalen Waddle obviously needs a lot of that attention too it's gonna be pick your poison at but this then point right you yeah now you have to pick your poison between our running backs who can take off at any moment our and then you have end. Tyreek Hill a tight end too so who's gonna benefit most from this this super deep receiving core that we have is it gonna be I wouldn't say Tyree Kill. Tyree Kill's the guy, like, he's going to need all that attention on defense, yeah. from the defense. But is it is it Jalen Waddle or is it Odell Beckham Jr.? Who do you think is going to benefit more from this? Neither. Tua. <laughs> Tua, oh, yeah. Tua. Tua's going to freaking eat. Yeah. I mean, he has to. And that, that kind of goes back to the contract situation. If there's a time to get it done, it's now. Because if you let him play out this year... And he has this type of talent on the field every play. <laughs> like, dude. Hopefully, Tua goes back to being, like you said earlier, that that surgeon, that guy that's just, yeah. you know, dishing here. The well, that would, be, that would be the best Tua we could have. Yeah. And and it would be best for him as well as far With as his numbers. all of this talent, you have to spread the ball around. Yeah, like man. That. And it leads you back to that, that year, right? It wasn't last year. It was the year before. Right. When he had that little stretch that he was having, he was getting 300 yards a game every game. I love these 400-yard games, but when you're doing those 300-yard games consistently, that means week in and week out, you're just balling, bro. You're it was against the Lions, the, defense, the yeah. Browns, the Bears. Remember, those games were like, oh, he was just doing it. Three touchdowns, yeah, it was yards. I remember there was a stretch in the season, uh, not last season. The year before, season, yeah. The year before. Where 2022, I, right? We would I say. started feeling so good about the Dolphins. I think the Lions game, we went down... Uh, by 14 mm -hmm. early in the game and I, and I was okay I was chilling I, I was like I've it's never true. felt this sense of peace with the Dolphins before where we're down by that much and I'm just like ah they'll figure it out we could score at yeah, any and time you, and also was it the Bears you were talking about no it was the Lions the game. Lions okay yeah, yeah but that Lions game I remember it was it was always a two touchdown lead we'd score and then they'd come back so it, it was maintained like as a 14 point lead for them right but then we started we started catching traction, right? We started doing it, and Tua, Tua was just putting the ball like in. It was it was like on the money. Yeah, every single he had throw, that really right? nice throw to Waddle. Yeah, man, in the end zone. Yeah, it was it was like a thirty yard throw, nothing crazy, but it was just <laughs> right Beautiful. in stride. It was Beautiful. perfect. Waddle had 
good enough separation, right? He had like three steps on the guy. Yeah. And he just he was putting everything on the money. So, but yeah, I want to ask everybody out there: Can the Dolphins have three receivers go for a thousand yards this season? Let me know in the comments. I'll answer that. Okay. I think it's possible. How likely? What What's the percentage that you would give that 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 happens this season? Assuming they all stay healthy. Assuming they all stay healthy. Assuming they all and stay they healthy. Play what's every the single game. Obviously. Let's say they each play 15 games. You want me to give it a percentage? Yeah. 60. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. 60%. Yeah. Okay. I think I think 60% because a healthy OBJ is one of the better receivers in the league, man. And I, I still think right now, to this day, he's... How old is he? Is, is he 31? Let me see. Yeah. He has to be. Yeah, he's 31. He's yeah. 31. So, yeah, I, I. he's what? He's a year older than Tyreek. Tyreek's still balling out. Obviously, Tyreek hasn't had the same injuries. If he could just stay healthy, yeah, I, I agree. Well, I wouldn't say 60%. I would still put it in the. You would put it under 50? Yeah, I would put it under 50. I would say it's about a 40% chance. Well, I think. Not it's not bad. My percentage is based. I'm banking on his talent, and I'm banking on him being healthy. Obviously, right? I I I still do believe in Odell, and that way, not too long ago with the Browns, he still looked like a monster, right? Mm -hmm. The year with the Rams still yeah, looked fantastic. In the Super Bowl, he was gonna win that MVP. Dude, in the Super Bowl, he was the best receiver on the field, and yeah. that was with Cooper Cup, right? So, ah, what a shame for him. Maybe he still got the ring. Yeah, right? That was the that was the year that Cooper Cup was literally the best receiver in the NFL. Yeah. He had 1,900 yards, 140 receptions. Well, with that being said, though, the Dolphins have obviously one of the better trios in the NFL. Yeah. But are they the best trio in the NFL, in your opinion? Man, that's that one is hard, man. I would have to... Because who do we have? We have the Titans. We have the Bears. Uh, we have the Texans. Texans. If you ask, that one's really hard, right? Because the the Bears, obviously, they got Keenan Allen. Keenan, Keenan Allen. Keenan Allen. <laughs> well, my country's coming out. Uh, DJ Moore, and then they just drafted Roma Dunze. Mm -hmm. I don't want to put too much. You can't you can't put them as the best because at the end of the day, you're a rookie. I'll, even though I, I do feel like wide receiver, it can translate. He can be one of the better receivers in the NFL, even off of his first year, right? Mm -hmm. But I don't want to give it to him yet. We haven't seen him on the field. Then you have you have the Titans, right? Uh, DeAndre Hopkins, uh, Calvin Ridley's gotten in there. Mm -hmm. And then you also consider that they brought in Tyler Boyd, you know, one of the better third receivers throughout the years, obviously with the Bengals as well. Um, so so you that's another cool team, but then you it leads me to the Texans, right? That's my pick for the best trio. I would have to say that as well. Um, just because the Titans, you, you, you're talking about Will Levis throwing them the ball. I'm not really concerned about that. The Bears, they do have a very talented young quarterback in Caleb Williams, but we haven't seen him on the, on the field yet. You know, we've seen rookies struggle. Maybe he hits a wall. Maybe he can't even figure out the NFL. I can't say that yet. So. That's a solid point because while the talent may be there, if the quarterback can't get you the ball you can't show your talent as a receiver exactly and so, we, we've seen that in the past right with, even with though i do believe that that caleb williams is the real deal let's see but, let's but you're see. right we i don't to, even want to say he's the real deal yet we we've, we've thought this about other quarterbacks that went number one i thought right? trevor lawrence was going to be the real deal i thought trevor lawrence was going to be herbert right herbert's like the god whatever but herbert well, i don't think he's that great either but i'm just saying what's funny is and and we can pull up this graphic Trevor Lawrence is actually closer to Daniel Jones. That <laughs> so check this out. Look at that. Okay, it's Mister Fifty Five Million Dollars mm -hmm. a Year, huh? <laughs> so uh, yeah, it's pretty funny there. But so that that leads me into you know forget about these other quarterbacks there, which if you ask me, I don't care. I'll say it right now. I think Tua is better than Herbert. You can put me on a cross. I really don't care. <laughs> Screw it. I'm saying it. And it's just, bro, the, over the past two seasons, even if you see this tweet from uh, from our guy, RG3, mm -hmm. I think he's awesome. I love him, too. 
Um, he's he's saying he's saying Tua's a better quarterback. This is a, a former quarterback. There's no bias there. He sees that. He thinks Tua's worth it too. Um, but if you ask me right now, I would have to give it to the Houston Texans. C.J. Stroud had a hell of a rookie year. I think I think the kid he's the real deal. I think right mm-hmm. now. Let's see. Maybe he has that sophomore slump, but with the team that they formed, man, Stephon Diggs, Nico Collins, Tank Dell, yeah, looked fantastic last year. And and only eleven games, got seven hundred and nine yards, seven touchdowns. You know, if you you'd like to think that if if he played the whole year last year, that's another thousand yard receiver, right? Yeah. So then you would have had obviously, uh, Stephon Diggs wasn't on the team last year, but Stephon Diggs had over a thousand yards. Nico Collins had over a thousand yards. Tank Tank Dell was on his way to over a thousand yards. Right. So that would have been three legi- legitimate people on the same team with over a thousand yards. They, it it's not a stretch to say they have three number one receivers. It's not. on that team. And Tank Dell was a rookie, so so you see the talent. Yeah, like he's he's crazy. He's fast. He's he's awesome. So I would say Houston Texans are our biggest threat, but. You know, if if in a in the perfect world, if Odell is able to stay out there, I can see us having the best trio in the NFL. I I would also say the Houston Texans, though. Okay, it's gonna be. Is there any other teams that I left out that you would say have a good trio that no, you would, would put up there? No, for me, it would there. It would just be the Dolphins, Bears. The Titans. Maybe the 49ers, the if Texans. they can keep that together. I, I do like Ricky Purcell. I think he's a cool, interesting rookie, right? Yeah, but again, we, we're going to have to see that play out, exactly. too. So, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say that I got Texans at one, Dolphins at two, Bears at three. Okay. Bears at three. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think I agree with that list. And then So, then you have the Titans at four? Titans Would you say that? Titans at four right now, yeah. Okay. Bengals at five. Bengals at five. All right. Yeah. I'll put I'll put the 49ers at five for me. Okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, man, definitely a great pick and and obviously Odell. I think he's he's gonna be good for us. I think we were definitely missing that last year. It's kind of crazy how we were banking on Braxton Burials to be that, but he just he didn't pan out, man. He he couldn't he couldn't get it together on the field. So yeah, for me, Braxton Burials was more of the uh, Wes Welker. <laughs> I was I was feeling really excited to have Braxton because he reminded me of Wes Welker, yeah. special teams guy, short and shorter, stature. <laughs> white boy. Yeah. For me, I was like, all right, this is this is our Wes Welker 2.0 over here. We're bringing him over. It's you bought be a lot into of fun. the the picture, right? Yeah. Yeah, and I, I thought it was cool. You actually made a, an edit, yeah, like the a, a video, right? The underdog video. Yeah, which, that was one of my favorite videos. I mean, if you can, I don't know if you can put a little link yeah, to that. Yeah, I'll see if I could link it. I think that will be cool, man, so people can check that out. Yeah. One of my favorite videos that you did. Um, yeah, exactly. I remember that signing, and I'm like, hey, this guy's going to he's gonna do that. He's going to take that leap. You know, he kind of hopped around in the AFC East, going from the Patriots to the Jets, then to us. So I'm like, all right, maybe he found home. He has a he has a nice looking girlfriend in Alex Earl, so yeah, she's she's nice. <laughs> yeah, we nice thought, to look at. We thought maybe, you know, maybe this will be the guy. He, I don't know. <laughs> That's not even gonna prove any point there. But yeah, yeah, man. I I think he he's providing something that we lacked, and gotta say, I think it's it's a great pickup. So I I do agree with with that on offense. Oh, we're talking as well. about OBJ. I was, OBJ. I was so lost right now. OBJ, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, he's he's gonna be great for Miami as long as he can stay healthy. Dolphins could have three 1,000-yard receivers. Yeah. Hopefully become that sixth team in NFL history to do it. And Tua mm-hmm. would be able to prove why he's worth that $55 million, right? Because this then <laughs> coming into this season, uh, I saw something else. He's just only been improving. Every year, he's getting more and more touchdowns. He's improved in that category every year, right? And yards. And yards. So... That leads us into the situation. We're still going to talk about Tua. We have to talk about him, right? Uh, Adam Schefter was recently on on uh, ESPN. ESPN, right? And they were they were talking about some stuff. So let's yeah, see if we can pull this clip up. Adam, what more can you tell us on where things stand right now with Tua and the Dolphins? Laura, look, the Dolphins have been very clear. They want to pay Tua Tungo by low. The question is, what is fair market value? 
And that's a moving bar because a couple of weeks ago, it would have been easy to argue that, hey, we don't know that he's worth the money that the Bengals are paying Joe Burrow, which is $55 million a year on average. But then Trevor Lawrence comes along and he gets $55 million a year on average. And so when that happens, the market shifts. And so the Dolphins and Tua Tungavailoa are now left to figure out what is the proper value for a quarterback of his abilities. Look, the Dolphins want to keep him. They're expected to keep him. They're going to get him signed at some point. The question is, what is that number? So, yeah, I, you know, hearing all these things, it doesn't seem like this is completely, I wouldn't say, obviously it's not over, but it doesn't yeah, seem like it's something that we're completely, completely screwed derailed. up. Yeah, yeah, it's not derailed. I think... I think this is just us playing hardball. Maybe Tua's camp playing hardball as well. Like they're definitely leaking stuff out yeah, by I saying saw... that we're not in the mar like at market value, right? Yeah. So, so what what do you think? Do you think that that this still gets done before training camp, or does this kind of like may continue to to decrease by Something the day? Something has to give here. I think it's I think it's over the guaranteed money, and I understand the Dolphins' perspective here. There, it's a risk giving him all that money, given all his injury history and everything maybe they want to see another another year you think yeah, like two years in a row next year Bob, it's just going to be more expensive next year i know but but i don't know okay look so maybe there's a price they're at right now and they're like okay if <laughs> we got to see it for two years right but this is the price that we're willing to give you right now i think tua and the dolphins need to meet somewhere in the middle yeah I think Tua needs to understand. Look, it, it has it to true. be. It has to be in guarantees, man. I don't think it's the annual average. I don't think that really matters, right? Like yeah. it's it's just it's almost a fake number. The Those guarantees guys are where it's at. First, I think they're just they're just sharks. They're killers, you know. And it sucks, man. When he when he switched with them, you, you kind of knew this was it was heading down that road. Yeah. And and they're they're once to get. You know, the most out of players, they did it with Christian Wilkins, right? They're, they're going to get them the bag. So I think that's exactly what they're trying to do. I do agree with you. If we can try to find a way to meet in the middle. And you, you did see in, in Tua's interview, he was saying, like, there's we're, we've had progress, but it's just about getting, you know, meeting in the middle. So it seems like he's willing to. Mm -hmm. Now, I do think that Tua's also the type of guy, he's probably sick of this already. He's probably going to go back to athletes first, too, and say, hey, uh, let's get this done, man. I don't. I don't want to deal with this anymore. Maybe he's also frustrated with them. You never right. know. So hopefully they could. They, that could be the case. Hopefully I'm tired of this. Maybe these guys are like, yo, hold on, hold on. Pay Tua. <laughs> just pay him. He's like, bro, we're Please. getting you. We're getting you a couple more million. Just wait. And Tua might at the end of the day be like, bro, I don't need a couple more million. I'm getting over fifty. Like let's yeah. let's just go, bro. I'm in Miami. I'm where I want to be. Look at this team that I have around me. At the end of the day, if if he can take that Tom Brady approach. Like, yeah, we spoke about that a little yeah. bit yesterday. If he can sacrifice, bro, and at this point, you're not sacrificing anything. You're sacrificing a couple million, right? Yeah, a couple million. What's a couple million, right? Yeah, to us, it's huge. But to <laughs> these guys, when you're signing for over 50, a, couple, a couple million is million. nothing, man. I'll take it right now. That'd be great. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Probably wouldn't be here. We'll be vacationing somewhere, yeah. right? But if he can just do that, get this, get this over with, it, it it'll just be great for the franchise man mm -hmm. and i think what i what i don't like to see right now is you, you've heard it with all these position groups you've heard it with the running backs with the quarterbacks wide receivers it's like we have to do it for our i guess their community right which mm -hmm. is like their their guys right the wide receivers the quarterbacks mm -hmm. and it's like i can't drive down the price for this because then i screw it up for everyone else but when when is that going to come to an end, man? Like it's it's kind of obnoxious. Like now, guys that don't deserve this type of money are getting it. Not to say I do think Tua deserves it. I think Tua is a fifty five million dollar year guy, right? Well, so, th but he's a fifty five million dollar year guy now because of what the other quarterbacks because when because of what they're getting because what because when Joe Burrow got it, I don't think Joe I don't think Tua is a, a fifty if Joe Burrow is getting fifty five. Tua shouldn't get more than Joe Burrow. I'm not. I don't think he should, right? I, but I do think he should get what Joe Burrow's getting. Well, now, yeah, now because it's a year later, the salary cap and other contracts have come in, like Trevor Lawrence. Yeah, but forget. Okay, forget about if we want to talk about you know, this guy deserves it because of his his physical traits or his hell of an arm or. 
the fact that he can run, whatever, those type of things. That that doesn't matter. Well, yeah, it's not a beauty pageant. It's not. It's and it, it's not about how fast you can run, how how far you can throw the ball. It's how effective you are on the field. Mm -hmm. And Tua is showing that he's just as effective as any other quarterback if you're going back to last year. If you're going back to the year before that as well, before his injuries, he was lights out, man. Mm -hmm. He was an MVP candidate. He's been that twice through his last two years, right? But do you think maybe the Dolphins, because I know for sure Tua doesn't want to go anywhere. Yeah. Tua wants to stay in Miami. Mm -hmm. He knows what it's like to be with a co What, Tua's going to leave Miami and possibly end up with another guy like Brian Flores? He doesn't want that. He doesn't want that. He, he wants to stay here, he man. He wants to be with Mike McDaniel, this offense that's been made for him, yeah. these electric receivers. This is the best place for Tua, and Tua's one of the best quarterbacks to have for this offense. Yeah. So it's a... It's something that it would be a shame over a few million dollars to lose. Yeah. So they need to meet somewhere in the middle, both of them. That yeah, but that goes for both exactly. Mm -hmm. Like you're gonna miss out on keeping Tua over a couple million, and Tua you're gonna you're gonna basically force yourself out of Miami. Maybe maybe request a trade. Ugh, maybe I really I, don't want. I don't want to hear that. But I we don't, don't want to deal with that, right? Yeah. Like you know what? At the end of the day, you can look at both sides and be like bro, this guy's being greedy or they're being stubborn. But at the end of the day, the Dolphins need to just go ahead and give him his market value. I, I That's that's what I'm, I'm ending up on right now. I did say in the previous episode that, you know, he didn't really have much leverage, which is, you know, in a sense kind of true because if you're trying to squeeze out all of this money, you're not going to sit in training camp. You're not going to do that. At the end of the day, it's going to hurt your pocket because you're getting these hefty fines, but you're also hurting your position going into the year, you know, by not being able to participate. You're not, you're, you're kind of taking a step back. You're going to go into the year, you know, not knowing as much as you should or being up to speed, right? It's in everyone's favor to get a deal done soon. Yeah. You need tool with a clear head going into camp, not thinking about a couple extra million dollars. It's... It's unfortunate that this has taken so long, but and if Jordan Love gets a deal done soon, which which, which we've heard that's yeah. about to happen, right? That would be the worst thing you could let happen. Yeah, then because that's now we drive up the price even more. Yeah, we've seen it with Jared Goff already, and we saw it with Trevor Lawrence. You would like to think that Tua would have been able to sign for fifty-two before Jared Goff, right? Jared Goff came out. It's like, boom! Give, just give me a little bit more than that. Mm -hmm. That's what I need, right? Trevor Lawrence signs. Mm -hmm. uh, need a little bit more than that. <laughs> you know, so it's like... What's Jordan Love going to get, though? Because I can't imagine him getting, for what, 10 good games? Nah, I don't, I don't know. I don't I don't think it's going to be any... Well, it's going to be over Trevor Lawrence, I believe. Hmm. So, let's say this guy signs for 57 now. No, no, this is, this is getting out of control. Bro, Tua's going to be like, need mm -hmm. more than that. You know what I'm saying? So... Bro, let's just, the longer we wait, the worse this gets in every single aspect. I, I think the Dolphins just need to eat one right now. Yeah. You know, forget about your your books. Forget about, like, hey, you, you make that shit work after, bro. Get mm -hmm. your quarterback, man. Have him have him set. You know, he is the, the biggest piece on this team. Like, he is the one that's going to potentially bring this team to what we need, which is playoff wins, the Super Bowl. You know what I'm saying? So no one else can do it. It's not like you can go out and get someone else. Keep him, right? Right. So I'm hoping this gets done before training camp. If it doesn't, I'm hoping so too. we're gonna have we're gonna have some some shit on our hands. So <laughs> Yeah. Well, that's gonna wrap it up for today's episode. Before I go though, guys, make sure to subscribe, give the video a thumbs up, leave us a comment or two, and Remember, we have the giveaway going on, so we're still counting those entries. We'll be announcing the winner on July 21st. It's going to be a Miami Dolphins jersey of your choosing, player, color, size, everything. So uh, it's also international. I know we had some people asking about that too. So if you are international, we will ship to mm -hmm. you too. We'll get it done. And that's going to be it for this week. We will see you guys on Monday. Thank you for tuning in with us, and we'll catch you guys in the next one. Thank Fins you, up. guys.